Hi guys, my name is Anuj Jindal. Welcome to Morning Tales for 23rd August 2019. Uh, before we start, if you have not seen Morning Tales for 22nd August, go back and watch that video first because the 10th question that we discussed yesterday, I'm going to answer the question uh, that we discussed yesterday, the 10th one. And one very important information that I asked you guys to search yourself, I will be talking about that as well. So I asked you to search on yourself by yourself about different kinds of trade unions not the typical trade unions that uh, we have in companies but unions of different kinds with respect to the trade which happens between countries so there can be a free trade agreement there can be a customs union there can be an economic union there can be uh, uh, you know a political union as well uh, and the list goes on. So it's very important to understand what it means specifically for examin examinations that we are targeting. Now a lot of uh, students uh, thought that what I'm doing here by not answering the questions and the additional information is that I am uh, transferring all this activity and the effort on you guys. But you would understand today uh, because I, I remember some students did answer it yesterday and after their thorough research and they answered it incorrectly. So those are the students who are actually going to benefit if they watch my video today because after their thorough research if they got it wrong and if they're going to get it right today through what I'm going to explain now they will never be able to forget it. So it's not only a one-way uh, activity where I tell you things and you consume them it's a two-way activity wherein I ask you something you answer that and then I come and correct it if it is wrong or I appreciate it if it is right. Okay, That's the entire uh, process or that's the entire purpose of trying to convert it into a two-way activity and not uh, you know keep it like a like a typical classroom where it's a one-way activity where I'm just asking you things and telling you things and you are not responding to me. Okay, So it's not about being lackadaisal about things it's about uh, trying to connect with you guys, trying to engage with you guys and also trying to make you more active when you're learning something new coming here, spending your precious time and trying to learn something new. So the question that I discussed, the 10th question was about uh, European Union. How many members European Union has presently? The answer to that question is still 28 because UK has not exited the European Union and the plan to exit it is uh, called as popularly called as Brexit, the exit of Britain from Euro European Union. But the more Im most important question and a lot more important question is what exactly is a European Union and what kind of European, what kind of union is a European Union out of these five unions. So the world or countries in the world around the world can enter into one of these or many of these uh, different types of unions starting from free trade agreement or free trade union to a political union. Let's dis discuss uh, all of these and in the process only we'll be able to understand where European Union lies and what kind of agreements does India has. Is India a, a part of any of these unions or not? So the first one is free trade agreement wherein the complexity is very low which is on the x-axis and the level of integration is also the lowest which is on the y-axis. So the free trade agreement, what happens in a free trade agreement is that let's say India and Bhutan today enter into a free trade agreement. What this would mean is that if let's say uh, water is coming from Bhutan to India then the amount of tariff which is normally charged would not be charged from India. If let's say uh, uh, coconuts are going from India to Bhutan because Bhutan does not have a coastline but it likes coconuts a lot. India has a heavy, a big coastline. So let's say coconuts are being exported from India to Bhutan, the tariffs are going to be reduced. Okay, because they have a free trade agreement, so the tariffs are going to be minimized to whatever level possible that is amicably decided among two countries or even more countries. Okay, it can be multilateral, it can be bilateral in nature. I hope you understand what is the meaning of multilateral and bilateral. Okay, so the reduction of tariffs between countries happens, amicably happens with their uh, 
consent whether it's multilateral or bilateral the purpose is to increase trade between different countries the next step is to form a customs union custom i hope you understand what custom is let's say you are uh, importing something from the us so you would have heard customs duty is being charged on it so that means an import duty is being charged on that particular product so customs union is when your import export policies become similar or the same when your import export policies are integrated with each other then you form a part of customs union so in a customs union import import export policies import export policies are being aligned or integrated that is why you have common external tariffs is india a part of any customs union not as of now we are only a part of free trade agreements with a lot of countries around the world but we do not have any customs union what is a common market a common market is a next level wherein capital free movement is allowed and services free movement is allowed let's say india and bhutan have a common market what would happen then there would be free movement of india into bhutan for in investment purposes and vice versa bhutanese currency would be able to flow freely into india for investment purposes so bhutanese people can come into india with their own currency can invest in india using their own currency so there will be free movement of capital what we hear that india in 1991 had current account current convertibility but did not did not go further towards capital account convertibility capital account convertibility would mean that you open up your markets for investment that means you anybody can come into indian market exchange their currencies and invest in indian market without getting government approval but a common market would mean that there would be free movement of capital for investment purposes you don't even need to exchange your currency the next one is economic union which is up one more ladder wherein there are no barriers for internal trade and this is where european union lies so european union is an economic union because number one the monetary policy is the same that is why united kingdom wants to exit the uh, european union because their monetary policy is determined together by all the countries it does not want that and it does not like that similarly there is free movement of labor which has resulted in a lot of migration into united united kingdom and that's why it does not like that because it hurts the jobs available for local people okay similarly trade is free there are no barriers at all you can move let's say you like uh, uh, let's say united kingdom uh, you know grows a lot of almonds but no other country in europe has access or has availability of almonds so united kingdom can freely send out freely export almonds without any barriers there will be no monetary or non monetary barriers and the last is a political union wherein the government also becomes the same so you have the same government so political union used to happen in olden times in the form of colonialism where the government used to become one but now because colonialism has ended political union can happen when two governments come together and decide to create one common government okay so these are different kinds of uh, uh, unions that i wanted to discuss and that is why i asked you guys to uh, read about it yourself and because some students were thinking that i am that uh, you know it's more important that i discuss it with you i thought it's even more important that i discuss it partially with you then give you some homework and then we come back together the next day and when and then we discuss it together again so that you never forget it i am very sure now you will never be able to forget it okay so the first question for today is which of the following committee has recommended to change the minimum member requirement for foreign portfolio investors investment sorry a very important question i would say and a very important topic uh, a hot topic for today because uh, sebi has recently changed a lot of requirements for foreign portfolio investments the committee that had been created for this purpose was hr khan committee and now sebi has gone forward and accepted uh, 
द रिकमेंडेशन ऑफ एच आर खान कमिटी रिगार्डिंग फॉरन पोर्टफोलियो इन्वेस्टमेंट्स वन ऑफ द मेजर रिकमेंडेशन वर नंबर वन दैट फॉरन पोर्टफोलियो इन्वेस्टर्स वर रिक्वायर्ड to meet a broad basing criteria now what this broad basing bb criteria was was that you needed or these foreign portfolio investors needed at least 20 investors to establish a fund and then to invest in india but now uh, that is no longer required okay number 2 one more major announcement is that central banks of countries that are not members of bis so there are certain member countries of bis bi stands for bank for international settlements and if you are a central bank of a country that is not a member of bis you can even then register as fpis in india okay similarly there has been some reward being announced for uh, uh, whistle blowers the limit is 1 crore or 10% of disgorgement amount amount disgorgement is the amount which is going to be captured through that whistle blowing which is going to be taken up by the uh, authorities by the government authorities because of that whistle blowing so either 10% or 1 crore whichever is less okay so these are the major announcements made by uh, the committee made by sebi based on the committee there are some more announcements and uh, i would again want you to, you to go and read it because this is one of the most important topics for today very high chances that a question might be asked either in phase 1 or even in phase 2 so go and read the entire document based on or given by sebi on the changes changes being announced uh, for fpis uh, i am expecting one question for sure from this area what is india's rank in 68th edition of bp's statistical review of world energy 2019 in terms of coal coal consuming countries it comes out with its review every year and according to bp's uh, uh, edition of 2019 which is the 68th india ranks at second so the correct answer for this question is a second what is the theme of indian economic summit 2019 now indian economic summit is a biennial event and it is hosted in collaboration with cii that is another question that can be asked cii stands for confederation of indian industry uh, so the theme for 2019 is a innovating for india strengthening south asia impacting the world remember the theme i believe these kinds of questions have been asked in the examination in the past and therefore they are expected to be asked yet again Who among the following is the first Asian swimmer to cross Catalina Channel? More more than the name of the swimmer, I believe it's equally important that you would know where and uh, where exactly is Catalina Channel. The answer to this question is A. Satyendra Singh Lohia, and Catalina Channel is a channel between United States and Catalina. Island, Santa Catalina Island. So let's draw very briefly the uh, map of United States. So this is the western coast of United States. It looks something like this, and something. It goes on to create Canada here. This is the western coast. You have the Gulf of California here. You have California here and Los Angeles here. and has a small island called santa catalina and the channel between them between this island and the mainland the connecting channel is called as catalina channel and uh, satyendra singh lohia lohia has become the first asian swimmer to cross this channel next question is who among the following has been selected for rajiv gandhi khel ratna award very important question i am expecting this question also to be asked in one or the other form in the examination the answer is d deepa malik for this question who is deepa malik she is the first indian woman to win a medal in paralympic games and won a silver medal in 2016 summer paralympic in short put category okay she is also won some medals in javelin category so short put and javelin that is her expertise uh, that can also be asked in the examination and she won a medal for short put in paralympic 2016 summer paralympics that can also be asked in the examination in which country has amazon established its largest ever office building not a very important question but i think it's a very excitement 
exciting uh, thing that Amazon is doing. It has set up its biggest ever office in Hyderabad in India, where up to 15,000 employees can be catered, can can work at the same time. And it's uh, surprising that it has not built something like this in the US, but in India. So this is the first time that Amazon has done something like this. The last question, name of the agreement which allows selling of insurance product through bank. Now, I actually wanted to ask the answer of this question from you guys, but because of this picture, I believe the answer has already been done. What are the other ways, other ways in which cross selling, because this is a kind of cross selling, other ways in which cross selling can be done by banks in India, commercial banks in India, and what are the names of those methods? So that is the question that I have for you today and I want you to answer this question and we'll try and discuss it tomorrow. What are the other ways of cross-selling? Number one, that banks can enter into and what are the official names of those methods that uh, are normally used by banks for cross-selling? Okay, so that is the question that I have for you today and I want you to uh, search for it a little bit and we will be talking about it tomorrow this was it for today's uh, uh, morning tales i hope you liked it if you did do not forget to subscribe to the channel spread the word about morning tales uh, share it with your friends so that more and more people can watch it can learn more and more on a daily basis and can have some engagement with me on a regular basis rather than only a one to many kind of video session where I give you some knowledge or some information and you consume it. That's not the way I would like to uh, create my videos. Okay. All the very best. I hope you liked it. Take care.